Now let's talk about high availability. What does that mean and why is it important in our context? High availability means that the system is always functioning and accessible. Pretty straightforward, right? But that also means that whether your users are overseas or whether they're in the middle of the night during, during low traffic or whether they're in the middle of rush hour during, during uh, high traffic, they will be able to access your app or your system or your service with the same fluidity and low latency that anyone would expect anywhere around the world, except maybe China. <laughs> All right, uh, so downtime is minimized and minimal human intervention is required. If human intervention was required to make things highly available, then, well, that's a, that's a severe bottleneck. So you're gonna have very stressed DevOps people uh, running around. The ideal thing here is that you have up, minimal upfront financial investment. So when you have a small application with low number of users, it's quite easy to make it highly available because, well, they're not going to be pinging your, your servers uh, every second or hundreds of times a second throughout the day. By the same token, when that scales up, well, making things highly available becomes more of a challenge because you have higher load on the system. You might have higher geographical area to cover. The ideal highly available cloud system will allow you to invest only a small amount to making a few users happy. And then as your users increase, you can invest progressively more amounts to make all your users happy. And this is what AWS offers. Like I just mentioned, it's really not easy to do this if you're using the old model of on-prem servers, unless you have dedicated teams of sysadmins and DevOps, it's a challenge. But again, this is why the whole cloud revolution is what it is. Because it does take so much effort to make something highly available on a large scale, only the most critical application or components can be afforded to be highly available. But this is simply not the case when you're using AWS. Let's talk about a few services that kind of uh, epitomize this highly available priority in, in the cloud. One is Elastic Load Balancers. You also might know them as Application Load Balancers, which is like V2, I think, of the Elastic Load Balancer. It sends its metrics to CloudWatch. It pretty much is the gateway to let you know how much actually traffic you're getting. Along with that, whether all those users are being served um, with, low, with low latency. And all that goes to CloudWatch, which can trigger the appropriate uh, responses. For example, Autoscaler or Lambdas or uh, SNS to alert the appropriate people. And it can also alert to problems such as failed EC2s. Then you have Elastic IP Address. These are a useful component to highly available systems because from an end user's perspective, they can still uh, query the same endpoint while the underlying resources, for example, whether it's a, a database or an EC2, can be switched out. So if it goes down, another one can replace it. It still has the same IP address. So from the user's perspective, it was always available. And that's really nice. Then you have Route 53, which I talked about in a previous video, which I can link down below. Uh, but this is Amazon's domain name system service, and it is designed for the highest level of availability. There's so many different ways that it can route traffic to your DNS based on just simple rules, geolocation, latency, health checks, failover. All those can factor in how you route your traffic to your corresponding resources. Again, maximizing the availability for all parties. Then you have auto-scaling, which I talked about quite at length. CloudWatch is a distributed statistics gathering system. CloudWatch is kind of like the dashboard for determining the availability of your service. It includes standard and custom metrics as I've outlined in my video. So that is a brief overview on what it means to be fault tolerant and highly available. They're kind of similar concepts, but they reflect different aspects of a distributed system and understanding how AWS facilitates both is an important part of being a cloud practitioner. All right, till next time.